Hello, today we are going to talk about Thomas H. Davenport's Business Process Reengineering. So what is a business process? We define business processes as a set of logically related tasks performed to achieve a defined business outcome. Business process reengineering is also known as business process redesign, business transformation, or business process change management. It is the analysis and design of workflows and processes within an organization. So why is business reengineering so important? A great example of business process reengineering is one that was implemented by form orders. Before the improvement of the accounting cycle of form orders, the department had to match up 14 items in order to verify a transaction. No database was used and the process was slow and inefficient. After the implementation of BPR, Ford was able to automatically match only three items to verify a transaction. And as a result, the headcount was reduced by 75%. The overall processing efficiency was increased and a database was implemented to increase flexibility and security. Devonport's process of reengineering begins with step one, develop the business vision and process objectives. The first step of the business process is to develop the business vision and process objectives. We can accomplish this by prioritizing objectives and setting a stretch target. Similarly, we can redesign the business process so that we can develop a specific vision that is related to the business objectives. Examples of objectives that business typically adopt are cost reduction, time reduction, output quality, and quality of work life. Cost reduction is an important redesign objective, but only in combination with others because it's in insufficient in itself. Excess attention to cost reduction results in trade-offs that are usually unacceptable to process stakeholders. Time reduction has been only a secondary objective of traditional industrial engineering. One common approach to cutting time from a product design process is to make the steps in the process begin simultaneously rather than sequentially. This can be accomplished by using IT to coordinate design directions among the various functional participants. This approach has been taken, for example, in the design of computers, telephone equipment, automobiles, and copiers. All processes have outputs. They are either physical or informational. Output quality has frequently been the focus process improvement in manufacturing environments. It is just as important an objective in the service industries as it is in processes with only internal customers. The specific measure of output quality may be uniformity, variability, or freedom from defects. This should be defined by the customer. A frequently neglected objective of process redesign is work-life quality of individuals. But now with the integration of IT, it can lead either to a greater empowerment of individuals or greater control. Step two, identifying the business processes to be redesigned. There are two approaches that you can use to identify which processes need to be redesigned. The first, the exhaustive approach, meaning to rigorously identify all processes within an organization, then prioritize them in order of urgency. Companies find it useful to classify each process to be redesigned in terms of beginning and end point, interfaces and organizational units, in other words, the functions or departments that are involved. Another method to identify the processes that need to be redesigned is to use the high impact approach, which means to identify the most important or the area that is most in conflict with the business vision. Companies that employ the high impact approach generally find it sufficient. Those companies taking the exhaustive approach, however, have not had the resources to quickly address all identified processes. Step three understand and measure the existing processes. Two primary reasons for understanding and measuring existing processes. First, problems with existing processes need to be understood so that they would not be repeated. Second, measure existing processes to set a baseline for future improvements. 
Understanding and measuring existing processes can be easily overemphasized. In several firms, the goal in redesigning a process was less eliminating the problem or bottleneck than in making radical improvements over the period process. Therefore, designers should understand the past process, problems, and errors before working on the new process. And the process should not be measured for measurement interest, only the specific redesign objective should be measured. Step 4. Identify the IT levers. Identifying IT levers. IT capabilities were thought of only after a process had been designed, even when using the highest industrial engineering approach. The conventional wisdom in IT usage has always been the first to determine the business requirements of a function, process, or other business entity, and then develop a system. The role of IT in a process must be done in the early stages of its redesign. Organizations may want to develop their own list of capabilities that are specific to the types of processes they employ. It is also a powerful tool that deserves its own step in the process redesign. IT can actually create the process design options rather than simply supporting them. And finally, step 5, design and build a prototype of the new process. Process design and prototyping. Management is expected to make changes to the prototype by including personal input and expanding on ideas as well as improving the overall mechanism of the prototype. Therefore, it is important to use different tools that enable rapid response to any type of change. One good example of such tools are the case tools that can be used to make process of design easier and faster. Another important aspect to keep in mind is the use of IT-driven processes. These processes help to respond more rapidly to changes in the environment. According to Davenport, IT makes the traditional life cycle of development look slow, and that IT is able to produce a prototype that is closer to expectations. In conclusion, we can see that Davenport's five-step model gives business a general guideline about what they should look for when it comes to improving and making their process more efficient. These guidelines include the use of all the important technology necessary to keep a business competitive and flexible, ready to face an unpredictable world.